Hello. Thank you for choosing to watch this video and giving Keysight the opportunity to demonstrate Pathwave system design, system view, running in concert with the Vector Signal Analyzer 89600 software. The goal of this video is to show that a systems engineer can easily get meaningful simulation results to verify that an RF transmit path does not degrade critical system performance specifications such as error vector magnitude or EVM. By the end of this video you'll be able to run realistic system simulations such as this. In order for you to run the same type of simulation on your PC or laptop, you'll need a system view and 89600 VSA license installed. Please reach out to your local Keysight salesperson or visit the website of Keysight for further information. So let's get started. The goal here is to place this transmit path into a system view 802.11ac workspace that is pre-configured to simultaneously run with the 89600 VSA part. This transmit path consists of two components that have been characterized by manufacturers. The first component, the PA, has been characterized by analog devices. Double-clicking on the model or part allows us to go directly to the website to read the corresponding PDF of this device and get more meaningful information on its performance. Once again at Reference Info and select Spreadsheet, we can see in this Excel spreadsheet the actual data that is used by this device in the system view schematic when it is running. Clearly this device has frequency dependency of key parameters. So that is what is meant by a sys parameter part. Manufacturers have characterized these devices and placed the information into the system view parts list. Upon simulation, real-world data is used to simulate the path or a particular part. If we double-click on the mixer model, we can see here vectors of information, gain conversion, P1dB, output saturation, and these parameters are once again frequency dependent. If we look at the oscillator component, we see that it supports the importation of a phase noise mask. We see two vectors offset from frequency and the corresponding dBc Hertz values. The filter models are behavioral models at this point. Certainly they can be replaced with S parameters obtained from a manufacturer website or from actual measurements in the laboratory. Many measurements can be made at this level, such as carrier to noise ratio, signal to noise ratio, cascaded compression points. In this instance, we're looking at the output spectrum at the port on the far right of the schematic. Being that we want to place the RF transmit path into a system view 80211 ac workspace that incorporates the VSA part. I'll go here to Help, Example Explorer, type in VSA, open the Baseband Verification folder, the Wireless LAN 80211 ac folder, and we'll open this workspace that consists of an 80211 AC transmitter and various components. The workspace consists of notes, previous results from simulation, and the important part here is the vector signal analyzer. We'll enable the vector signal analyzer 
run the simulation. And now we can monitor the front panel of the vector signal analyzer. We can see the constellation plots, spectrum plot, and various other metrics, along with the error vector magnitude, which is presently running about minus 137 dB. This workspace utilizes a setup file for the VSA. The setup file in system view used by the VSA part is the same setup file that is utilized in the laboratory on the actual instrumentation. These two setup files are identical and the front panels are identical as well. So there's no question about the setup file that is used in the simulation environment along with the setup file that's used in the laboratory. I have rearranged the workspace slightly and now we're going to enable these two filters here. After enabling them, we'll once again run the workspace or start the simulation. I'll run the simulation the VSA panel will appear once again. And now we can see, due to the filters in line, that the EVM is degraded to about minus 42 dB. Now I'm going to go to the upper left hand corner of our workspace tree and I'm going to add a folder and label it Transmit Path. So double click on our new folder, or single click. We'll go Add Designs Schematic. Label this Transmit. Then I'll paste from the previous workspace our transmit path that we created earlier. So clearly one can cut and paste from one workspace to another. There are other methods of bringing a workspace into an existing workspace. This is just one method of doing such. Now that I have the transmit schematic, I'm going to come here and add, I should say transmit path folder, add an analysis engine to this schematic. And we're going to add the RF system analysis capability. And we'll accept the default settings here. Now I'll go to the test board zoom in on it, right click, and we'll add a new graph. The same power spectrum graph that we looked at before. So I'll just run the frequency domain analysis of system view. And lo and behold, we see the same spectrum plot as we had previously. Now the goal here is to place this transmit path into the workspace where the 802.11ac single generator exists. The easiest way to place this transmit path into this workspace where the 802.11ac transmitter resides is by selecting the schematic on the workspace tree, click, dragging, and dropping it, and place it on the data flow simulator. I've arranged the windows of this workspace ever so slightly, placed the component 
in line with the vector signal analyzer. We'll run the simulation again. Look at the VSA front panel and we'll see that the EVM is approximately still about minus 42 dB. I will stop the simulation and just note that key parameters of this schematic reside here in the Parameters tab. We have a center frequency defined, a particular operational bandwidth which you can choose from, and various other parameters that you have access to. If I now double click here on this component and increase the signal power from 8 dBm to about 12 dBm and run the simulation again and look at the results. We still see that things are relatively okay vis-a-vis -vis previous simulation results. So clearly we see with this existing RF transmit path in the 802.11ac schematic workspace that we were able to obtain or create more power and still keep in line with some form of an EVM spe specification, assuming if the EVM specification was minus 42. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do want to learn more about Pathwave System View, please visit the Keysight website or locate your local sales representative.